Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, October 17th, 2019. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this reading is dated for the 17th of October, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on that day. It, whenever you watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that's the message for you at that time. Um, something cool I wanted to point out. I woke up this morning and I, I woke up a little bit later than normal um, because I went to bed later than normal. We did do happy hour so I had to last night so I had to take some time to um, recuperate from that but um, I needed to like down like wind down and whatnot because I was all wired and stuff which was so much fun. I really thank you guys so much for coming out for happy hour. I really I really appreciate it and it's really a super fun. I look forward to continuing doing it but um, when I finally like really woke up this morning and finally looked at my phone um, to see what time it was, it was 7.17 on October 17th. I thought that was pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, so um, let's just get straight into it. Um, so I was sitting here channeling, you know, getting ready, getting connected for the, with the collective and just pulling in the, the collective energies and the messages for today. And I saw pink. And that was a nice surprise because we've been seeing so much orange. I've been seeing so much orange lately for the collective. And, you know, the orange color that I was seeing was indicative of this emotional purging or this emotional element um, to, well, overly emotional element to life right now. Just I mean, emotions are a part of life all the time. <laughs> but anyway, um, but so, okay. So I was like, oh, pink, okay, unconditional love. And I was feeling like um, this was love for the self and whatnot. And I, this was all happening while I was, you know, shuffling and then a, a card fell out and I looked and it was the three of swords. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. And then overall energy is the two of cups within this starry nighttime scene and then the on the other side is the moon but in the, on this side of the moon you have the figure of the high priestess um, who is showing up naked pure bare you know no frills no masks no nothing um, and this side of the card represents something being revealed, something being seen, something being known, something being understood. It also can indicate making a certain choice. Um, I don't know what these two, what these two items are. Well, I mean, honestly, I guess I can, I guess you can figure out. I, uh, intuitively, I'm getting, I guess in this situation, the choice would be to choose the light of illumination or to choose to stay in some sort of illusion. I don't know why this green, whatever, this green substance, this green liquid, whatever this is that, that the high priestess is holding here. To me, it's, it feels like it's um, a drug, an illusionary situation compared to the light of this, what she's holding in her hand here, okay? Um, what I'm hearing is someone's coming out of the dark about something. Uh, what this is, what th this doesn't, this is not saying to me that, um, you know, there's some sort of new heartbreak, there's some sort of new shade or deception going on here. To me, this is saying that uh, illusions are being seen through, illusions are being set straight, is the word that I heard, or the phrase that I heard. And in this case, being set straight, meaning coming to the light or being understood, seen for what it truly is, understood why something happened the way it did. Um, yeah, so the heartbreak is being understood here whatever heartbreak that you're dealing with or that you've been dealing with, or maybe this is on behalf of someone else, like a counterpart or something. It's just that illumination is coming forward for you or someone else. It doesn't matter. Take it as it resonates. And in some cases, I'm hearing the cycle may be broken also because the moon represents cycles. Okay. So as someone is coming to the light about this as some sort of illumination is coming forward with this, there's potential for a cycle to be broken. 
but ultimately this is your choice for whomever this is whomever this is that's going through this this is your choice to either stay in the fog of illusion of illusion or to in essence step into the light you know what i mean <laughs> All right, let's move forward. <laughs> okay. Oakley doakley. All right. Sorry, give me a second, guys. I'm kind of in my own head at the moment. Um, anyway, uh, let's reshuffle this. I <laughs> I may need to take a second. Nah, I'll be alright. Okay. One last shuffle and then we'll get into the rest of the reading here. Ooh. Alright, I was just following my instincts and shuffled that way and that's and this is what's fallen out. So I'm going to go with it. Um, we have death. We have the page of cups. We have the lovers. We have the wheel of fortune. We have the 10 of cups. And then we have the four of swords. Reality is changing for somebody. And it looks like somebody is making some sort of conscious effort to manifest a union here. You have, look at this four of swords. You have a patriarchal symbol, all right, in this gentleman here. You have um, like a, a patriarch, yes, a grandfather, a grandmaster even, but his, his environment is burning down. Okay, his environment is burning down. So something that has been long standing, it seems to be on its way out potentially, giving way for the Ten of Cups to flourish, okay? It still hasn't been realized yet, guys, all right? Because, I mean, it's still in energetic escrow, we'll call it, you know? It, it's, it's still in the process of manifesting. It, hasn't, it may not have materially manifested, shown up in your life just yet in the material sense, okay? But it's here, it's coming, it's on its way. And it really looks like with these, energies this is still just a pre-shuffle guys okay but with these energies of the wheel of fortune the lovers the page of cups and death especially with the wheel of fortune here being someone uh, it's the this is the magician this figure okay and this is very much an as above so below type of energy and in this case as above is the relationship between these two counterparts. It's in the fifth dimensional reality or it's not, not, it's not quite manifested in the 3D yet, okay? But it looks like someone is making, with this Wheel of Fortune energy, someone is making a conscious effort to manifest this. Somebody is dreaming about this, the Page of Cups. There is a transformation that is happening. It's like this person or these people, whomever this is, okay, whomever this energy is for, it's literally, you're literally facing the reaper right now. And yet, that does not feel scary at all. That actually feels, I feel elation surrounding that. It, quite frankly, it could, it could be relief. Relief as if you're finally being released from the devil's clutches and that has no and that and, 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 and that and no one else is responsible for that other than you let me let me let me say that again you are it's like you're being released from the devil's clutches it's like you're being released from the chains of the devil and I'm saying that because as I was describing this, I was seeing the devil in my head. And the devil represents um, toxic, okay, fine, I'll say that. Narcissism, that was the first thing that was gonna jump out of my mouth, but I stopped it. But okay, for somebody that resonates. The devil represents narcissism or narcissistic tendencies. It represents codependency. It represents attachment. It represents um, chained, being ch chained or confined. 
It represents control and manipulation. And it's like you're consciously, for whomever them I'm speaking to here, you're facing the reaper and you're consciously breaking free from that energy. And no one else is responsible for that other than you. Because the devil can only have control over us when we hand him or her that control. And the only way for you to release that control is to take your power back and break those chains. I want to show you this. The devil in the typical Rider Waite deck, let me see if, let me see. Maybe it may not be a good enough depiction here. But the devil in the Rider Waite deck, which is the, um, basically, which is the deck that all decks today are based off of. Well, mostly. Okay, mostly are mostly based off of, for the most part. This is the most common depiction of the Tarot here, yes? In this, it, okay, this depiction isn't the best. In others, you can see it better. But you see that chain around those people's necks? Normally, that looks really, really loose. And you can literally just slip right out of it, which is indicative of the fact that you have a choice. You will always have a choice. You can choose freedom or you can choose confinement. And society does a lot to influence to choose confinement. But it feels like here, someone is letting go of that attachment. Someone is, letting, someone is consciously manifesting that, manifesting in the physical world that which exists in the spiritual reality. Or at least priming the landscape for situations to come through. This is a dream of yours or theirs. Page of Cups. Do you see how, and then the Ten of Cups here, it's a nighttime. Look, so look, look at it this way, look at it this way. The page is standing here on the beach, right? This beach right here is standing here, looking up at the stars, dreaming about that, that love. Because in this here, this is the Ace of Cups that's appearing out of thin air or, or, or out, of the, out of the sky. Someone is dreaming about this. And so with the Three of Swords that came out before, with the moon also, and then what was the other one? Three of Swords, the moon. I can't remember the last card. Oh, the Two of Cups. <laughs> Duh, the Two of Cups. Someone is understanding the hurt, the pain, the heartbreak. The cycle is closing out. The cycles are closing out. That's what I'm hearing. All right? Don't expect anything. Don't expect any action to happen right away, too quickly, anytime soon even. But understand that the message so far for this moment in time, the cycles are closing out. The heartbreak is starting to become understood. And it could be that, this, that, that an individual is now facing the same or similar heartbreak that, say, their counterpart went through in association with this, with this situation in the past. And so now they're really starting to come to understand it, come to terms with it, come to terms with the situation, starting to see things from a different perspective, which is only probably making it worse for this individual. depending on how on your perspective it's either worse or it's better because of the healing that's coming through okay so it's either worse or it's hmm i wouldn't say it's worse you might you might say that it's worse just because of the fact that um you may not have necessarily really been in a position to experience something deeply emotional like this But it's not necessarily worse. It's just different to what you're used to. So that's definitely giving you a run for your money. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, it's a good thing, okay? Sorry for that loud gulp. <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restart now. Also, keep in mind that the devil is... The devil is the exact opposite energy of the lovers. 
Just saying. Okay. <laughs> well, what does that mean? I don't know. Take it as it resonates. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday, October 17th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right. We're giving this three shuffles, guys. And then we will see what we've got. One, ooh, ooh, ooh. Hmm. There's the Virgo. Sorry, the hermit. The hermit represents Virgo energy. <laughs> Two. And a three. Yeah, this pink energy. Let's talk about this pink energy. Let's talk about this pink energy because I'm feel I'm seeing it, y'all. I'm feeling it, and it's oh, I might start crying. Like, damn, damn. All right, spirit, what's going on today? Like, what is this? I really, I re just, I really might start crying, guys. Like, this energy is. It's heavy and yet it's not. Okay, so what we were, uh, nothing's come out yet, but what I wanna say this, what we were just talking about here, this realization of the pain that somebody has been through is really tearing someone apart. I'm, I, might ha I might have to pause because whatever I'm feeling right, this, ooh, goodness gracious. There is a big, big breakthrough happening there's a big breakthrough happening. And I'm gonna describe what I'm feeling here. This may not be verbatim, what this feels like though is there is love and someone is feeling love and appreciation for somebody else on such a deeper level because it feels like they are, they are experiencing what another person went through. Now they're starting to experience it firsthand and there is like, it's almost as if, speaking to the person that's feeling this energy, it's almost as if you're in awe right now of the strength and resiliency. Is resiliency a word? Resilience. The fortitude, the the wherewithal even of another person to, to, to not only experience, feel this energy, but to just like power through it, to strive regardless of it. Great, deep love, respect, and admir admiration for someone for how strong they are. Wow, okay. Okay, so the extreme emotion has passed now that I talked my way through it. But I swear, I was gonna, oh wow. All right, so Spirit, what do you wanna discuss with us today? Give us, give us a moment here, but guys, just bear with us. Just bear with us. Okay. More is coming, they say. More is coming. Ooh. I'm just going to go until they tell me to stop. And that is not yet. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep going. I don't know what's on the table right now. I have, my eyes are closed. My eyes are closed. We're going to, we're going to give this one more shuffle. Ooh, 
let this one fall out. Okay. Oof. Oof. Cards are getting thrown all over the place. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You guys, you have the three of wands. <laughs> Shit. You have the three of wands, and then you have the page of cups again. This is upright. Okay. Here's a page of swords. Someone's being watched by a king of cups, someone who is in very, very, very much in love. Love, respect, admiration. Yep, I'm putting that there. You damn right, I'm putting that. <laughs> you damn right, I'm putting that there. King of cups, page of swords, seven of cups. Someone is being watched by this king of cups and this king of cups is confused as fuck. Doesn't know which way to go. Doesn't know how to approach things. Doesn't know how to say I'm sorry. Doesn't even know if it's appropriate to, to apologize. Doesn't even know if it would be accepted. Is probably a little terrified. There is nothing wrong with being terrified, okay? If this is you, Please don't take that as a negative. There is nothing wrong with being terrified. All right. You have the Three of Cups, the Tower, the Knight of Pentacles, and finally the Six of Pentacles. It's very interesting. Because with this, with this energy with the tower of, with the energy of the tower, the three of cups, it's almost as if someone is, this, wow, someone is grateful. Someone is grateful for, for somebody else, to somebody else, for helping them tear down this tower or helping them break through this mask or helping them to see how hollow their life was. And now wants, I, I really might start crying, you guys. I just want to let you know so that, because I keep feeling it hit me. Um, and I don't want to just start bawling here and you guys aren't prepared, <laughs> okay? I'm doing my best. It's not really, I mean, it just, it just keeps hitting me. But someone here is grateful and wants to give back. Okay, you have the tower. And it's the side of the tower in which the mask is coming off. And you're seeing in how there's nothing, literally nothing in this tower. It is a hollow structure. And the direction that you were once going in, okay, whoops, indicative of these chariot, the chariot energies here with the, these two sphinxes and the rubble of the chariot down here. I don't know if you can actually see that. Is it bright enough? Can you see that? It's kind of dark. But it's like the, ooh, 22, 22 on the counter. Oh, Lord. The direction that you were once going in seems hollow to you now, but yet you're grateful for it. Three of Cups, you're grateful for it. And now you want to give back, probably to this person that helped you break free. But you have to start slow. The Knight of Pentacles in nighttime. This is a slow, probably an arduous process. It's not something that's going to be healed or happen overnight, okay? But you see, this knight hasn't even started moving yet. It's nighttime. He's not moving. Well, okay, this doesn't necessarily mean that he hasn't started moving yet, but that's what I'm feeling. It's nighttime. It's like this guy, this, this guy, the knight of pentacles, whoever this knight of pentacles is. It doesn't have to be a man. It could be a woman. This is just energy, okay? But the knight of pentacles, in this instance, he feels like he's still kind of planning. Especially with this king of cups. Seven of Cups, Page of Swords here. Someone doesn't really know how to move forward. Doesn't really know how to say I'm sorry. But it's still, but it's still watching. Sure is. Intently. <laughs> Intently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of cute, though. Interesting. Three of Wands here. The Three of Wands is an energy of waiting for a return on an investment. 
But that's, I don't feel like that's the case here. What I feel like the Three of Wands is speaking to is more of momentum. Having made a choice and now working on following through with that choice, especially with the dreamer energy here, okay? Dreaming up, trying to figure out. Look at, look at, all of the court cards are in the dark. Page of Cups, King of Cups, Knight of Pentacles. They're all nighttime scenes which speaks to the subconscious, which speaks to dreams, maybe even planning. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So I want to get a little bit of clarity here. I want to help. I want to. I want to get a little bit of clarity surrounding this person here, this King of Cups energy, because this King of Cups is really quite confused. Doesn't know where to start. Maybe you don't even know which end is up right now, because your emotions are or are, are, might be all over the place. But with the King of Cups facing us here, um. It feels like he's owning up, he's stepping up to the plate, he's taking responsibility for it, maybe. That's what I just heard. It feels like he's taking responsibility for it. Again, this doesn't have to be a man. This can be a woman also, okay? We're just talking about um, energy here. And this, and as the King of Cups, energetically, this represents an individual that is aware of the contents within their own heart and is not afraid to pursue that. But this is, I mean, it's very similar to the King of Wands energy. Yes, all of the kings are not afraid to move forward with what they are, with what they want or represent. For cups, this would be the heart or the emotions, okay? Love, even intuition, okay? Healing also. Because water um, represents healing or can represent healing, okay? So this is intently watching though, intently watching, trying to make amends, trying to make sense of the situation, trying to figure out which end is up. Yeah, okay, one last shuffle here. Ooh. Okay, flyers, three of cups, nine of wands, ooh, and the devil. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, well, this is the devil energy that I was talking about. This is literally you. We're talking about this King of Cups here, whomever this is. This could be you, or it could be someone that you're, count you're connected with, a counterpart or something. Um, but there is a sense of deep connection to source, is what I just heard, with this Three of Cups, body, mind, and spirit. The union of body, mind, and spirit. This feels like someone is, because with these birds here, this is indicative. This to me represents like community. Um, but what this is saying, what I'm feeling here is like someone is actually finally starting to really listen to the universe, listen to their intuition, listen to their higher selves, listen to God, source, creator, whom, however you identify it, uh, listen to their angels, their guides, their guardians, whatever. It feels like someone is finally starting to listen to spirit, we'll say. And that doesn't mean that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like joining a church or you're getting religious and everything. No, it just, it means that you're finally starting to listen to the messages. Take note of the synchronicities and the signs. If they're numbers, if it's music, if it's just if it's just your intuition, like if you're clairaudient and you're hearing the whispers of your soul, you're hearing the whispers of spirit trying to guide you and awaken you, enlighten you, it feels like you're listening now, which is helping you to release yourself from the clutches of the devil and rise above with this nine of wands. This nine of wands in this deck, it, look, you have that staircase there. Um, Nine of Wands represents perseverance. It's also like the wounded warrior energy and whatnot, whatever. But I'm literally seeing with this Nine of Wands, I'm literally seeing you or whomever this is rising up. 
climbing the stairs, raising your vibration, releasing yourself from the low three-dimensional dense energy, the toxicity that is represented by the devil here, okay? That is this King of Cups, okay? This is a very, very good thing. And, and romantic relationship aside, you, this king, of, I'm talking to the king of cups here, okay? You rising above and stepping into this energy, this maturity, this responsibility, this is a feat in and of itself. Like if nothing else happens or comes of this, whatever is, is, is leading you towards rising above and stepping into this emotional maturity, if nothing else comes of this situation, you still have the fact that you are now 100 or you are now 100 much better equipped emotionally for the rest of your life now i'm not i'm not trying to say that don't get your hopes up buddy because this ain't going nowhere no 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 that is not what i'm saying at all but what i want to say what i want to acknowledge is the fact that you are in this energy or you're stepping into this energy now and that, the cards are clapping. See, we're clapping. That is excellent. If nothing else comes of it, just say it, just look at it this way. If nothing else comes of this, comes of this, you still have this. You still have this emotional maturity. And that is nothing to thumb your nose at. That is nothing to, 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 to scoff at. Okay. All right, so let's get let's get a little more clarity on this. I mean, I feel like we got the clarity already. Yes, we did. All right. So then actually Okay. I'm going to leave this to the side for a second because what I want to do with this energy is I want to get spirit's take on it, but let's get some clarity here real quick. I mean, we don't really need clarity here either. You want clarity. Okay. All right. The Tower, Three of Cups, Six of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, not Page, Knight of Pentacles. All right. So, so let's get a little bit of clarity, a little bit of, ooh, okay. There's the Three of Cups again. You see, I told you. So what I was saying here, what this energy felt like, wow, that's a stack. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> what this energy feels like is here, someone is grateful. Three of Cups, all right? You've got the Three of Cups twice. Someone here is grateful to someone else for helping them break free or see past the illusion. And now there is a desire to reciprocate. Six of Pentacles, okay? Knight of Pentacles hasn't started moving yet, but we still have this energy of, of the union of body, mind, and spirit that is allowing someone to listen. Eight of Wands to the Knight of Wands, or Nine of Wands. Look at that. That wanted to show itself, so I'm going to leave it there. Okay. So this Three of Cups is representing gratitude. It's also representing the union of body, mind, and spirit, that which is allowing someone to open up to other sort, extra sources of information, I guess. This is what I just heard, so I'm going to say it that way, okay? Let's look at what this is. Okay, Five of Cups. Ooh, there's the Tower again. There's the Nine of Wands again. But you see, there's the Wheel of Fortune and there's the Four of Swords again. Okay, so, yes, regret, heartbreak, pain, shame, guilt, sorrow. And yet, the beauty of the Five of Cups here is that not all is lost. Because in traditional Rider-Waite decks, or excuse me, traditional depictions of the Rider-Waite system, two... Three cups have spilled, but two cups are still standing. All is not lost. And the three cups that have spilled are three cups of toxicity. Okay? That's normally what we say with the five of cups here. Yes? Look, you have the tower again. Okay? So the message is very clear. There is a long-standing situation that is coming to a close, that is being shifted, that is being rerouted is what I'm hearing, reorganized, 
Toxicity handled is what I just heard. Nine of Wands, perseverance, rising above. This is still giving me an energy of raising your one's vibration. Yes, to the Wheel of Fortune. Change in karma, change in destiny. The Wheel of Fortune has come out again. It came out in the pre-shuffle and it had the magician on it in the pre-shuffle and that was giving me an energy of consciously rearranging one's life or consciously manifesting that which is above into the below or as above so below you know you know what i'm saying four of swords again change in perspective but also rest figuring it out planning something okay the four of swords is an energy of removing yourself from the battle to heal lick your wounds a little bit do a little triage and rework your plan Figure out how you're gonna what your what's your battle plan when you go back into when you when you step back into it, and that's what we have here, Knight of Pentacles. Someone is moving slowly. Yes, someone hasn't started moving yet, but they're 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 working on it. They're trying to. They're trying to understand how to come forward. Oh goodness gracious. Okay, fine. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it because this is literally what I heard. They're trying to figure out how to move forward given the mess that someone has made. Whether it's you or this person, who, matter, who cares? Doesn't matter. Although I will be honest, what I heard was given the mess that he has made, this King of Cups, whomever this King of Cups is. How do I come forward given what's happened in the past? You just gotta trust yourself. You have to trust that the guidance is correct. The guidance that you are hearing, the whispers from the universe, from your soul, from your, 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 for, I just heard from your love chakra. What is your love chakra? Your heart. All right. So with all of that said, I want to get spirits take. Oh, look. Oh, well, that's the devil is down here, but that's because I was. I, I remember now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was, I picked it out and I left it there. Um, Spirit's take on this is going to be advice for this King of Cups here on how to handle this situation. Give me a second. Let me just, um, I want to shuffle this up like this for a little. All right. All right. Now I'm going to give this three more shuffles here. So Spirit's advice for this King of Cups. Spirit's advice for this King of Cups. I just heard, look to the truth of the matter. See things clearly for what they are. A lot of what's in front of you, a lot of what's confusing you, uh, represented by the Seven of Cups energy here, is illusionary. I just heard blindfolded. Someone may feel like they're blindfolded right now. Interesting. All right, let's see what we got here. Spirit's advice for this King of Cups. Spirit's advice for this King of, oh, five, oh, 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 oh. All right, well, we have the Fool here at the bottom of the deck. That's a good thing. Taking a leap of faith, starting something new. Challenges surmounted is what I heard. See, the first thing that came out is the Five of Swords, but then we've got the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords has been coming out a lot lately. All right? The Queen of Swords has been coming out a lot lately. And the queen, in, in the Queen of Swords coming out, she's been saying, she's been bringing forth an energy of just cutting out what is no longer serving, what's superfluous what you've had what you've had just just about enough of and it feels like there's what this is saying already is that there really is no reason to to rehash the past it's not going to help anything so if you're trying to figure out how to come forward there's no i mean you might want to apologize okay saying sorry is necessary i just heard that but there's no reason to really rehash it there's no reason to really have a, 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 a major conversation about it and, and put it all out on the table and, and explain why 
this happened and that happened. I mean, if there are certain things that do need to be touched upon, okay, but that really shouldn't need to be the main focus. All right, so you can already put that to rest. Look at what else we have here. The Nine of Cups, Death, and Strength. You have wish fulfillment here. When you go through a transformation of the ego, the ego, this is definitely for a masculine energy, whether it's a man or a woman, doesn't matter, but this is definitely for a masculine energy. Your wish, your wish fulfillment, your satisfaction comes in when you tame your ego, when you rein your ego in and, you're say, and you say, you know what? It's time to put the destructive energy, the competition, the backstabbing, the one-upmanship, the pettiness of all of this Five of Swords energy. It's time to put that behind completely, 100%. And this actually kind of feels like Maybe not for all of you whom, who are resonating as this King of Cups, but, but this kind of feels like someone is co finally coming into the position with where their heart can be open enough to say, I really do want to leave the drama behind me. I do want to leave the ego behind me. Oh gosh, it's so dark. Sorry guys. The, the sun keeps coming in and out of the clouds, so that's it's messing with the color of the camera, but anyway. Um, is that making, that makes sense, right? Your advice here for this King of Cups is you have to put your ego aside. You have to go through what we, what is mainly called, uh, often called a ego death. But it's not really a death. That's why I'm putting it in, in quotes. It's a, tra it's, it's a ego disillusion, dissolve the ego into the self so that the ego is now integrated with the self and it's not trying to drive the ship. Instead, it's working in tandem with the rest of you. Okay? Because to be quite honest, your heart really should be driving this ship, not your mind, not your ego. Absolutely not. Your ego is helpful. Your ego is a defense mechanism, but it is not the driver here. Your heart is, or at least it should be. It needs to be. And it seems like that's what's coming to the surface. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be really quite honest with everybody here. This is why I'm, I'm, I said earlier, don't expect anything to happen too quickly. Don't expect any, anything to happen right away or really maybe even any, it's, I guess it's safer to say, don't expect anything to happen anytime soon, okay? Because this feels like right now, this is just a realization that someone is finally coming to. And, it, and in, in other words, it feels like someone is finally allowing themselves to sink into their heart a little bit and focus there instead of focusing with their ego, okay? But whether or not someone is gonna have the cojones to step up and, and speak, to take action, I'm, I'm sorry, let me say when, not whether or not, but whenever they get the cojones to step forward, that is on a case-by-case -case situation. Now, if, you are the, if you're the feminine, on the feminine side here and you're watching this and this is resonating, or at least you feel like this, this fits for your life, sit in an energy of gratitude and appreciation and love for this person for starting to really be confident enough, secure enough, mature enough, brave, brave enough to start sinking into their heart and allowing that to take the lead, okay? Hold gratitude for that. Hold appreciation for that. Congratulate them energetically. Yeah? This is not an easy thing, especially not for masculine energies, okay? All right, let's get your oracle guidance. And today we are definitely going with the dragons, yes? All right. Oracle guidance for today's reading. Okay. Here we go.
here we go. Oracle guidance. You have gold and silver violet flame dragon. Oh, wow. Transmutes the old around you with wisdom and grace. It's time for transmutation, magic, and healing. Offer service under grace. And I exclaimed like that because the violet flame is a very, very strong tool. I used to use the violet flame all, all regularly when I was really in the very beginnings of the, 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 the bulk of this awakening that I've experienced. Um, I was still with my ex-husband at the time. And what I would do was every, well, every time I walked the dogs, we had dogs. And, uh, you know, especially in the morning, every morning when I would walk the dogs, I would, um, I would do a meditation in which I was breathing in violet flame energy and, um, you know, allowing that to help me heal. And it, ooh, um, I used that specifically to help call back the fragmented, start calling back the fragmented pieces of myself that were scattered everywhere, that were helping to keep me in an unstable state. And it was so incredibly powerful. It was so incredibly powerful. So if you're feeling, if you're going through this, I highly recommend that you look up techniques for um, the violet flame, working with the violet flame and violet flame meditations and whatnot. You can find them everywhere. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on Google. You can find them anywhere. Just search violet flame meditation. I even used to do a violet flame meditation when I was doing weekly twin flame readings every Sunday. We would start, and when I went live, I, st I would start the, med the, the, the session with a meditation and we would do a violet flame. It was amazing. I should probably find a way to bring that back. Anyway, let's read this card. <laughs> there it is. This is a fifth dimensional dragon. Gold and silver, violet flame dragon. Okay. Fifth dimensional gold and silver, violet flame dragons are powerful alchemists. When they come to us, they transmute the old and allow magic and wonder to be revealed in its place. These glorious dragons work with Archangel Zadkiel and Saint Germain, the Lord of Civilization, and automatically link us to them when we call them, when we call them in. Saint Germain was a great magician and dragon master. When we speak his name, a great light touches us. Archangel Zadkiel, too, illuminates us and the dragons when we call him in. The dragons then surround us in gold, silver, and violet flames of wisdom, grace, and transmutation. The golden, I'm sorry, the violet flames transmute the old and raise the frequency to a higher level. The silver ones bring in divine feminine grace, and the gold ones saturate us with wisdom. And raising the vibration is exactly what I was picking up on here with the nine of wands. You see that staircase? I see that as stepping up the vibrational ladder. Yes? It's beautiful. The guidance with this card is, this card suggests it's time to let go of an aspect of your life that is no longer serving you. Ask the gold and silver violet flame dragons to clear the thought of it totally from your energy fields. Sense or feel them etherically burning up the old. Then ask them to replace it with new and joyful possibilities that come to you at a higher frequency. When you connect with these dragons, you have a wonderful opportunity of service work. You can send them under the law of grace to any person or place that needs transformation. Remember, you will also be working with Saint Germain and Archangel Zadkiel, who will illuminate you. So take a few moments now to direct these dragons to heal people, places, situations, 
and the world. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.